Radio TV Phono Nut here, and we have a little Crosley from the early 50s. It's one that I fixed up, just a little five tube set. Been trying to sell it locally since April on the on Facebook Marketplace and the baby clothes and cell phone pages. And aside from one or two post likes, which don't mean deadly squat, we've gotten zero interest on this. You know, it's like a friend of mine told me, he said in your area, about the only way you're going to sell anything like that is if you include some some, some free liquor or, or, or a free smartphone or, or, or maybe, 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 a, maybe some hookers or, or some illegal drugs. And I said, well, we're not going to do none of that. So I put it on the Facebook antique radio group and... Somebody chimed in and said 35 bucks is a bargain, and you get it boxed up, and let me know what the shipping is, and I'll buy it. So we're going to make a boxing video to show people how to properly pack one of these Bakelite case radios, which apparently is something many people don't know how to do, and then the results are usually tragic. So first we're going to wrap it up really well in some bubble wrap. Okay, now we got it wrapped up in heavy-duty bubble wrap, at least in that direction anyway. Okay, here's the radio wrapped up in bubble wrap with some bubble wrap pieces folded over and taped the sides here. Alright, here's box number one that the radio is going to go in with plenty of padded material in the bottom of the box. Here's the radio inside the box all wrapped up. Now we need to come up with some packing material to fill in the sides and the top here so the radio does not move around during transit. Alright, here are the sides all filled in with packing material. I will show you. These things here that I call the Amazon bags, these air-filled plastic baggy things, I hate them with a passion. Don't use them. Okay, Bubble wrap folded in top to take up the slack there, and now we're just about ready to seal up box number one. All right, I shoved a little more bubble wrap wadded up down in here to take up the slack. Now we're ready to seal up box number one. All right, here's box number one, all wrapped up and thoroughly taped. There's no way this is coming open, and there's no way anything's going to shift in it. Okay, here's box number two, and this one's about the right size to handle all the packing material we're going to put in it. Okay, we have some packing material in the bottom of the box. You know, I folded up bubble wrap, uh, foam rubber, even packing peanuts, preferably placed inside of a grocery bag so they don't fly everywhere, will do. Just as long as you got something in the bottom of the box that will keep the item from moving around, yet offer some shock resistance in case the box is subjected to a hard shock, which it's probably going to be. Now just like with box number one, we're going to fill in all these gaps with packing material. I don't know what this stuff's called, but it's some kind of packing foam. I had some of that from something I received, so I just wrapped it up and wrapped it around box number one, and I'm going to fill in these cracks here with some other material. Alright, we have everything crammed in here to take up the space. Now all that's left is to put a piece or two of thick bubble wrap on top here to take up the slack and seal the box shut. Alright, here we are all boxed up, taped up, and ready to go. I could play kickball with this thing and it still wouldn't get broken. I could sit on it and it still wouldn't get broken. I could do just about anything to it and it still wouldn't get broken. So FedEx, if y'all break this, y'all be better y'all better be ready to pony up. Now, all I have to do now is get the gentleman a shipping quote and whatever FedEx charges me is what I'm gonna charge him. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna charge him for my labor. I'm not gonna charge him for the packing tape. I'm not gonna charge him for the packing materials. Especially seeing as how the packing materials or stuff that I recycled and on that subject shipping is high in today's world as I'm sure you know and 
if you can help it, you really don't need to be adding the cost of packing materials to the bill because you run it up too high, the buyer is going to back out on you. So the best thing to do is do what I do. If you have incoming packages, save all the packing material, which I don't have many of anymore, but you know, I'm not sending that many out anymore either. Well, I never was sending that many out in the grand scheme of things, but anyway, Another option is to go check out the dumpsters at your furniture stores, your appliance stores, your electronic stores, etc., etc. Years ago, I used to get all kind of packing material out of those dumpsters, and it didn't cost me a dime. So there you go. But on the subject of this, I'm probably going to forward this video to anybody on eBay who I buy a record player or radio from, as rare as that's getting in today's world. They want too much money for that junk. But I'm going to forward them this video. I'm going to tell them this is how I want it done. And if I need to pay you any extra to get it done, then I'll be happy to do so. But, but this is how you have to do it. You can't take shortcuts. Because if you do, you're going to have a very disappointing experience both for you and for the buyer because when you don't pack something right the insurance is not going to cover it you're the one that's going to have to cover it and in the world of eBay that means refunding the buyer what they initially paid for the item plus what they paid for shipping and then you're still going to have to pay the shipping to FedEx or UPS or the post office or whoever to get it delivered out there in the first place. So if you decide to get lazy and get skimpy and don't do it right, then everybody loses. The buyer loses out because something they want it gets destroyed and you lose out because you're going to end up having to fork over more money than what you got for the radio or whatever you sold in the first place. Oh, and you may be wondering why why you don't see any fragile stickers on the box. Well, normally I don't put fragile stickers on boxes because, number one, these go through sorting machines, and machines can't read. Number two, when they do have human contact, many of those humans are not in the best of moods, and they see a fragile sticker on something, and they're going to say, hmm, well, let's just see how much abuse this box really can take. So... You just don't need to invite trouble. You know, the best way to do it is just pack it well in the first place, and then you won't have to worry about stickers and whatnot. And as far as what carrier to use, I've heard horror stories about all three of the major ones, but it all boils down to pack it well. I cannot emphasize that enough. Pack it to withstand a bomb blast. Personally, I use FedEx for larger stuff like this because they're cheaper and they usually move faster than the post office. The post office, you're liable to pay 50 something dollars for a box this size for priority mail shipment and then it still might take them two weeks to get it to where it's supposed to go. And quite frankly, when I pay that kind of money to ship something, I expect it to be delivered priority mail, not show up two weeks from now. Generally with FedEx, something like this will be there within two to five business days, depending on how far away the destination is.